In this video, I'm going to show you how to place the front ABS wheel speed sensor on this Ford Excursion. Located behind your brakes, we'll have to take those off to get to it. Let's get started. Use a 21 millimeter socket and remove all eight lug nuts and then we can pull the wheel off. We have to disconnect the ABS sensor wire and to do that we actually have to move the fender liner out of the way a little bit because it goes up behind it and up all the way to right about here. So let's take the fasteners off so we can at least peel away the back of it to get access. Use a five and a half millimeter socket to remove the screws that hold the fender liner onto the fender itself. There are supposed to be several. My next one is actually a Phillips head, but it's supposed to be a five and a half, just like the previous one. On the inside right here, there's an eight millimeter headed screw or bolt, remove that. Keep following the edge along, you'll see another five and a half millimeter screw at the front. And further in the front, underneath the fender liner, an eight millimeter headed screw. Now pull the fender liner slightly down. Also push it back at the same time so you can get it off of the fender. that off. Following the ABS sensor wire up you'll see where it plugs in and this is why we had to remove the fender liner. Push on that tab and disconnect it from the electrical connector. Following it down on the frame let's unhook it from the retainer. Just use a trim tool and pop it off and then continue following it along on the brake hose. You'll see it's clipped on. Just pull on the wire that'll unclip it from the brake hose. Just like that. Now let's take the caliper and bracket assembly off of the front axle. Use a 21 millimeter socket, remove the top bolt and the bottom bolt, and we'll take the whole thing, put it back on the leaf spring so it doesn't hang by the brake hose while we do the work. With this bolt taken out, leave it in a couple threads so it can hold the caliper while we take off the bottom. Now support the caliper with one hand and with the other take that bolt out with that out, you can remove the caliper and bracket assembly, flip it over, and we'll put it right on that leaf spring, just like that. Now you can remove the rotor. If it's seized, use a hammer, tap between the lug studs to break it free. Hopefully yours is not though. Set it aside. Behind the wheel hub, you'll see that the backing shield has this cover here. You're gonna wanna pry up on it. I know it's gonna bend, that's okay. We'll bend it right back into place at the end and use a five millimeter Allen to remove the bolt holding down the ABS sensor. Take this off. Now you should be able to gently twist and pull on the sensor. Be careful because it does have a shim underneath. Take that with it. Remove it right through the backing shield. Take this shim off so it doesn't get damaged. We will have to reuse it. There it is. Take the ABS sensor and stick it right through the same way the old one came out. You have to maneuver it in. Perfect. There we go. Now don't forget to put in the shim that we removed. The reason this is here is so it can get the proper spacing. And now, carefully slide it down all the way, make sure it bottoms out. Now I'll reinstall the bolt. Once it's bottomed out, 
You don't need to tighten it a whole lot because it's very small. All you need to do is snug it and just give it about an eighth of a turn at most. Now we're just going to press this right back down, just like that, so it can protect it. At this point, you'd want to clean up the surface of the hub. Mine is new, so I don't have to worry about it. But for yours, take a wire brush or sanding disc and remove any rust that might be built up around it so the rotor can sit nice and flush when it goes on. Now let's coat the hub surface in some anti-seize. Avoid spraying it on the lug studs or getting it on if you have the brushed kind. If you get any on, that's no big deal. Just wipe it off, but don't load them up with it. My rotor is new, so I don't have to worry about rust here, but if yours is used, sand it down, clean it off so that it has a nice flat surface to mount on the hub with. Install your rotor. If you got a bunch of fingerprints on it, clean off both the outer and the inner braking surface with some brake parts cleaner and a clean paper towel or a rag. To hold the rotor on a little bit better, I'm going to use an old axle nut and a lug nut and basically squish it up against the hub temporarily so it doesn't flop around while I try to put on the caliper. It doesn't have to be tight, just snug. Install the caliper. Have your bolts ready, start them on. Snug them up. The torque for these two is between 141 foot-pounds and 191 foot-pounds. I'm just going to go for a higher number, 190. Resecure the ABS sensor to the brake line or brake hose. Both of these clips. And then on the frame right here, there's an oval slot. That's where this push clip will go in. Make sure you push it in all the way. That way it's nicely secured. Go up right below the fender and plug in the ABS sensor. Make sure it clicks. Let's install the fender liner. Be careful not to pinch any of the wires that are there as you try to install this. That way they don't break. Push it further back than you want it, just so you can bring it up underneath the fender. And once you do that, you should be able to push it up in place. Just like that. Let's reinstall the bolts that hold it on. There's an eight millimeter headed bolt at the front. Another eight millimeter bolt goes right back here. I have to push this up a little bit to have it lined up. I gotta. And let's put in all of the five and a half millimeter screws that go along the fender. Let's get the wheel back on. Put on all eight lug nuts. We'll bottom them out in a cross pattern to seat the wheel evenly. And then also in a cross pattern, we're gonna to torque them to 148 foot pounds. Hundred and forty eight foot pounds in a cross pattern. Here we go. Double check them if you'd like, take it for a road test. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. 
the only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.